By 8th of August 1944, the German army's situation in Normandy was precarious at best. Successive battles against British and Commonwealth forces had sucked in and pinned the bulk of their troops and armour to the east of the theatre, and Patton's 3rd US Army had been unleashed in the west in the breakout Operation Cobra. Hitler had ordered the front be stripped of available panzers to be sent to contain and break the marauding Americans, leaving the area in the path of the rest of the Allies relatively denuded of resources. And it is upon this background that the battle takes place in which my game is a very minuscule snapshot. Operation Totalize was an attempt by 2nd Canadian Corps to crack German defences south of the by now recaptured Caen and advance towards Falaise. The first phase of Totalize saw a night attack by infantry mounted and armoured personnel carriers seize several of their forward objectives. By the morning the Germans were preparing counter-attacks to regain the initiative and contain the advance, but the Allies were wise to the German playbook by now and were dug in to defend their gains. It is at this counter-attack at the western end of the battlefield that my game will focus. Panzer Grenadiers of 12th SS, Hitler Jugend, are probing defenders from the terrain feature known as Le Petit Ravin, which has afforded them a route towards the Allied lines relatively unmolested by artillery. The Germans are going to be the attackers in a mission based upon the probe scenario from the main chain of command rulebook whilst a British infantry platoon attached to the 1st Northamptonshire Yeomanry attempts to halt them. If the Germans can move a unit to the Allied baseline, it is assumed they will have found a route through which to unleash their greater strength in an attempt to disrupt the remaining parts of Operation Totalize. Let's have a look at the forces that will be used in this battle report. Well, as we can see here, we have the uh, the board layout, and uh, I'm starting on the right-hand side where the Germans uh, will be um, deploying from, basically, and attacking towards the left side on the camera here. Okay, uh, as you can see, it's fairly broken terrain. There's no road. The Allies have the high ground in terms of some hills, and uh, the Germans will be attacking through woods and other broken terrain. Here is the British contingent, represented by a regular infantry platoon. Uh, they are represented with the usual three sections and uh, two senior officers, gone with two Piat teams and a two-inch mortar for support. And as you can see, there are two Sherman tanks as well. The German attackers are an SS Panzer Grenadier platoon, um, represented by the standard force organisational layout of three sections, a senior leader, a Panzer Schreck team and a Panther tank. I wouldn't normally feature the SS on this channel, uh, but if you want to play, play this period of Normandy then they are very present, so you kind of have to acknowledge their existence. I'm representing them as regular troops and I'm maxing out their force morale though um, to represent their fanatical nature. And here is the dispositions of the patrol markers at the beginning of the patrol phase. You can see the British have placed two each on each of their uh, pieces of high ground, whereas uh, if we move down to the Germans, you can see they have uh, done their initial moves onto the board and a little bit to their right flank, okay? And we'll see how that plays out for them as and when they uh, get moving. And here we can see the final dispositions of the patrol markers at the end of the patrol phase. Um, they're going to, you can see that the Germans have been pushing up on the right into the hedgerows. That's all, that looks like that's where they're going to be trying to launch their attack on. There's only one of their patrol markers in the centre. Maybe they're going to be trying to uh, put something there just to counterbalance it whilst they put in a heavy attack on the right though. The British just moved forwards where they could to pin down the Germans as quickly as they possibly could. Onto the position of the jump off points, you can see the Germans managed to put one in the hedgerows whilst the other two are a bit more towards the centre of the road, although still in a position to support their main attack. Uh, the Allies, for their part, were pretty much pinned back to behind their own high ground, but that allows them to deploy onto it, and even one at the very back of the board, but uh, we'll see if they're in a good enough position to halt the German attack. Starting the game proper, the Germans deploy straight away into the hedgerows, uh, very far forward on the board, and uh, they also deploy a panther a bit further back. Uh, if that's not a statement of intent with the first set of command dice of the game, then I'm not sure what is. The British 
deployed directly opposite the Panzer Grenadiers and opened fire on them, killing two of them and also wounding the uh, squad leader as well into the bargain, putting an instant dent in the force morale of the Germans. Nonetheless, the Germans push up and engage in a firefight between them and the defenders, then with their multiple, heavy, uh, multiple machine guns and the British in hard cover, so it's a bit more even than normal. Uh, the British, for their part, bring on a Sherman tank at the back of the board um, to support themselves and hopefully slow down the Panther a little bit. And uh, also out of shot, they have a flanking force on their right to do the German length left as well. Um, the British hoped that the Sherman would slow down the Panther, but uh, it was not to be in one immense shot. The Panther just hits on an 11 and destroyed the British tank, no problem at all. Feeling the pressure, the British send their flanking force out to the double towards the German lines, hoping to divert attention away from the main attack. Uh, however, the Germans commit harder to their attack, deploying a second squad of Panzer Grenadiers amongst the hedgerows and moving full out towards the Allied baseline. The Panther has to move through a hastily deployed British smokescreen in order to continue to support the attack. Uh, despite starting to take casualties themselves, the British continue to occupy the high ground and engage the Germans in the firefight. Meanwhile, the flanking force, although sustaining shock through the rapid movement, arrives in the woods within one potential move of locking down, overrunning an Axis jump-off point. However, earning their first chain of command point, the canny Germans then move their uh, jump-off point a bit further up the board and away from the um, infiltrating British. Um, next, they move up more Panzer Grenadiers on the far left flank. Things are now looking very grim for the British as the Germans are very close to their objective and they still have armour support. Having said that, the British then get a triple turn and a chain of command point into the bargain. They ambush the Panther with a peer team in the flank, the first shot luckily immobilising the beast. Uh, next, the British get a very lucky command dice roll, allowing the peer to get another fortunate hit on the Panther, this time killing the commander and causing the crew to abandon the vehicle. Then, the last British squad is deployed in front of the advancing Panzer Grenadiers on their far left. Although the fire only causes a little shock, there is now a solid obstacle between the Germans and victory. To make matters worse, the flanking British squad could also be moved, leaving the Germans again to decide whether to cover their back lines or reinforce their attack. The Germans deploy from the repositioned jump-off point, taking the Piet team by surprise and killing them in one round of shooting. The senior leader now deploys with the back line to shore up the position by removing shock and directing the firefight himself. The British, for their part, deploy their second senior leader to the squad at, the ba at their baseline on their far left to inflict more shock on their enemies. The force on the hill continues to shoot at their long-standing enemies in the hedgerow before smoke again covers that line of sight. The British flanking force continues to move forwards towards the German rear. The Germans know it is a do or die time as the British are close to outmanoeuvring them. First, the senior leader moves up to remove shock, then the junior leader calls Handgranaten and assaults the position to their front. It is a very risky move, but reckless assaults were not unheard of by the 12th SS, especially in this campaign. The combat ends in a bloodbath, with every German killed by the dug-in British. The British, however, lose a great many men of their own, and whilst their squad is unbroken and not even, not even pinned, they have lost a senior commander killed, and their force morale is dangerously low. Elsewhere, the newly deployed Panzer Grenadier squad advances to the front of the wood and shoots with half effect at the battered British infantry, reducing the Bren team to just one man. The British use their command dice to move the flanking force onto a German jump-off point, so when the turn ends that will be a major blow to Axis morale. The remaining senior leader uses his command points to remove the shark from the squad and even out the split of men in each team. The squad then shoots down into the Germans to their front, killing one. The Germans need to break through now, so the squad in the woods assaults the defenders on the weakened hill position. After a tough fight, they reduce the British to two men and a wounded junior leader only but they are themselves wiped out by a vicious roll by the Allies, inflicting more kills than the attackers had models. This puts the Germans at a force morale of only two, with one damaged squad remaining. I'm going to have to call it there, as there is still a potential Sherman to bring on for the Allies and an undamaged British squad uh, marauding amongst German jump-off points. 
It was a game with a high body count, without any teams or squads breaking or even being pinned. Such seems to typify the cast character of the fighting in this part of Normandy though, and on this occasion the Allies hold the day. In the real battle, the 12th SS's attempts to retake the staging points held by the Canadian 2nd Corps were repulsed with heavy losses. Some 80% of the German armour venturing from Le Petit Ravin was lost, and the second stage of Operation Totalize proceeded on time. In the end, Totalize did not result in the clean sweep to Falaise that was rather optimistically desired by Field Marshal Montgomery and the rest of Allied High Command, but it was another stepping stone towards the encirclement of the German army in Normandy, and cost the Wehrmacht yet more men and materials that they could not afford to lose. Thank you for joining me in this battle report. I hope that you enjoyed the new format as I try something new. Uh, please let me know if you like the style in the comments below, as I'm interested to know. Anyway, I'm going to go now, so take care and have a good day. Goodbye.